Hello everyone, we're very happy to finally showcase Amplify Imposters, our one-click solution that allows you to optimize your projects with ease by using next-generation billboard imposters. You might ask yourself, but what exactly are imposters? Imposters are camera-facing quads or simple polygonal shapes that replace complex geometry at a distance by rendering a fake 3D representation of the original asset that can either be pre-baked in the editor or created at runtime. As of the recording of this video, our tool only provides in-editor baked imposters, but will soon support real-time generation, which will allow for some novel uses, such as crowds or swaying vegetation. Imposters are quite flexible and very easy to set up. I'll show you how to create a couple of imposters and how to take advantage of Unity's own LOD system. Do keep in mind that Amplify Imposters is still in development. The UI and general workflow is subject to change. For updated information, it's best to check the official wiki link in the video description. Let's begin. Start by selecting our model. We add the Amplify Imposter component. Now that we added the component, we're presented with a couple of options. We can either bake using the default settings, or we can select its folder. As you may notice, it defaults into the actual model folder, but you can save it anywhere inside your assets folder. I'll just save. Since we've selected its folder, we can now set up its parameters. Alternatively, for a one-click solution, you could have simply pressed Bake in Posters, where it would ask you where you wanted to save your asset, and bake it using the default settings. I myself prefer to use this one, where you can actually configure the baking parameters. For this example, we'll use the spherical imposter. The spherical imposter uses a lower complexity shader, but does not allow for smooth blending between each view. Unlike the octahedron imposters, which actually provide smooth blending between views, but break down at close distances. For this example, let's stick with the spherical imposter. I'll leave the texture size at its default value, along with the axis frames and pixel padding. The texture size represents the final texture size with all the frames stored, and the amount of frames is defined by the axis frames. A value of 16 represents 16 by 16 views of your asset. The more views you have, the smoother the blending between each view, but the resolution will be lower, as you will have to store it in your predefined texture size. So if you want higher resolutions per view, use a smaller number. However, if you want smooth blending between each views, use a higher number of frames and the octahedron imposters. I'll show you the main differences later on the video. Let's continue. So as I said, this represents your final texture size. The axis frames represent the number of views baked, in this case 16 by 16 views. The pixel padding simply represents the padding for each individual view. A number of 32 means that it will be expanded by 32 pixels in order to avoid artifacts caused by map mapping. Also notice that we can define which maps we want to render. For this example, let's leave it at its default setting for everything. In addition to all the bake texture options, you also have a flexible billboard mesh editor. This allows you to reduce overdraw by using custom meshes per imposter instead of using a simple plane. You're given two methods, an automatic one and a manual one. You'll find that the automatic method works for most cases, and you can actually tweak it by controlling the max number of vertices, the outline tolerance, and even the normal scale. For some objects, you might actually need to manually edit it. If that's the case, feel free to use the manual editor. But as I said, for most cases I find that the automatic mode works great. Let's bake the imposter. And here we go. Just with a few clicks, we've constructed our first imposter asset. Do note the popping that I mentioned earlier. This is a result of the technique used. You can actually reduce that effect by using the octahedron imposter. Let's do that now. So I'll just select the octahedron imposter and bake. As you can see, the popping is much less noticeable now. The imposter shader actually gives you a couple of options that you can tweak to improve its quality. 
You can adjust the texture bias. It's parallax. Which is specific to octahedron imposters. You can adjust the clip value. As you may have noticed, imposters are alpha cutout. This clip control will be quite handy. And last but not least, the shadow bias amount is great to tweak your shadows. It's almost unnoticeable at a certain distance. And that's where imposters really shine, when they're used in conjunction with existing LODs, with imposters at a certain distance and meshes up close. Let's do that now. Let's set up an imposter in an existing LOD group.